Alright, so hello again YouTube. Today we are going to be doing a video review on this thing right here. This is my new soldering iron, which I have had for a couple months already. I have used it. This is the Xtronic model 3020, uh, 3000 series uh, soldering iron with controller base. So it is a soldering iron which, a, with ha which has a full soldering station. It has temperature control. This soldering iron is like $70 on Amazon about and it is one of the one of the cheaper soldering irons which has a digital temper temperature control. This would probably be about comparable to the uh, lower end Weller soldering iron stations which also have digital or analog temperature control. You can see it has a dial here and this basically allows you to adjust your temperature from the minimum setting to the maximum. It gives you a pretty wide range from about 400 to 800 degrees, roughly. And mostly I, I just keep it in the middle. If I have to solder a big wire, I could put it up higher and it works very well. This is just a conical soldering tip. Uh, normally from what I understand, it's better to use the uh, wedge tips, which this soldering iron did come with, but I found out that this tip works just fine for most applications which I use it for. I've only ever used that tip. It also has this uh, wick thing, like this metal, I don't know what to call it. It's a like brass shavings with forks in it basically. But uh, this basically lets you clean off your soldering iron without causing heat shock like a sponge would. There's a place for a sponge here too. The sponge fell out a while ago. The soldering iron, it's it's pretty lightweight. I guess it's very easy to hold. It has a rubber grip as well. So what I think we're going to do right now is I want to compare this soldering iron to my old soldering iron. This is the soldering iron I had basically been using entirely up until I got this one. I learned to solder on this soldering iron, which is cheap and very basic. This soldering iron, it's a Radio Shack 40 watt soldering station. You could see that if you just compare the tips on them. Uh, first of all, the Radio Shack one is huge. And it's also much lower quality metal. You could see that the metal, like this is supposed to be a tip. Like this one. Like it's supposed to go to a point. But uh, this is completely flat. This is just because this metal just chips away and it doesn't really tin very well and it just kind of corrodes all the way up. This soldering iron, yeah, it's comparing it to this one, it is incredibly basic. Like this one, you have a di your dial control indicator, you can see the temperature. Whereas on this one, you have a low setting and a high setting, 40 watts and 20 watts or off. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to move this one out the way. And I'm actually going to do a demonstration using a soldering iron, doing something, some work which I actually need to do. Which uh, you can see, this is a power outlet thing that I have to tin these wires because I'm, I'm going to clamp them down in in a bus bar, and I don't want the wires to fray all that much. So let's turn this thing on. Uh, 809 degrees. Said it maybe 700. Uh, one thing to note is that this is 12 gauge wire. 12 gauge wire is pretty thick. It's very hard to tin. So as far as soldering we are using, we're using this uh, activity solder. Just normal unleaded solder. So wow, this uh, heat up already. Another thing, that one would take like five minutes to heat up or more. Well, not five minutes. I don't know, but it took a while. While I am recording this, I'm going to attempt to make some kind of wire holder thing to keep these wires in place while I am working on them. So we need to get something like this, and yeah, just to keep this wire in place. So this might not be enough heat, I, d I don't really know, but I, yeah, so let's just... So 
So here we are. Yeah, it's a little lumpy. Let, let me straighten that out. That didn't take that long. Now let's try with the other soldering iron and see how that works. All right, so here we are with this Radio Shack soldering iron. It's on the low setting right now. I think we're going to have to turn that up just because even with the better soldering iron, we had to turn it up to about two thirds power. So this, we're gonna need more power. The red wire is tin, the black wire is not. All right, so after three minutes, the soldering iron is ready to go. And that was quite a wait. The other soldering iron would heat up almost instantaneously. And you can see, yeah, the, it just formed a bead of solder and it just fell off. So I'm gonna try to do it it's a soldering iron, even though it might not work that well. It's just tinning a wire. But uh, the gauge of the wire is definitely a bit more than this can handle. Yeah, I think it has a lot to do with the tip. Is not... Uh, straight so it's kind of worn out and it's not really working right but I mean if I was in a situation where I had to use the soldering iron I could tin the wire I guess here's the final result Oh, this one's still hot a little bit. So you could see, I mean, the tinning of the wires are probably about the same quality. But this one took way less time. And this one was much more difficult. It took way more effort and time to do this one. I had to go in at a bunch of weird angles. Mainly just because of the tip of the, the older soldering iron. You could also see that if I straighten up these wires correctly... Yeah, you could see that on the black wire, some of the insulation was burnt off and receded. Much more than did on the red wire. That is because I kept having to hold the soldering iron on this wire just to straighten it out, messing with exactly how this was formed because there, are, you could see the remnants of it, but there's a bubble forming here of solder and that was not good, so I had to straighten it out. That burned away some of the insulation. Whereas with this one, it was very simple. I just basically held the soldering iron up to the wire and put the solder there wherever I wanted it to go. And it was very simple and easy. Both of these tinnings on these wires will be usable though in my robot. So the older soldering iron does produce a usable quality, I guess. It's just very inefficient with time and effort. What I'd say is that this soldering iron is much better than this one. I don't even know if you would even buy this one now since Radio Shack is out of business, but this one you can get on Amazon is much better. So if you need a soldering iron just to do basically all the normal stuff you do, I would recommend to get this one, the Xtronic one.